It's the most widespread drought in Queensland's history. Almost 80% of the state is drought declared, including parts of the southeast. While rain has fallen, it's been a long way from drought breaking, and many places have missed out altogether. For farmers caught in a cycle of debt, dying stock and even depression, it's become a struggle to survive. Now some of the worst affected are questioning whether the federal government's doing enough to help. Alison Horne has the story. Life's rarely easy in outback Queensland, but right now hundreds of farmers are in dire need of help. At the end of the day, sometimes you just think, well, just sell the place, like, you know, but you can't. They keep telling us that they're handing out all this money, but I've yet to see any of it. We can always do the job better, but the only thing that ultimately that's ever going to fix things in the end uh, is, is rain. Parts of the state have been in drought for more than two years and last weekend's rain failed to fall on some of the places most in need. The little bit of rain that most people have had, it's, well actually it's done more harm than good. The little bit of grass that I had left has actually gone black now. It's, it's just leached the protein that's left in it out of it. Mick and Tess Pemble own a cattle station near Charters Towers. They got about 10 millimetres in the scattered drop, just enough to settle most of the dust. Each month they spend more than $35,000 trying to feed starving cattle. Even then, some don't survive. I lost 200 cows, but there's 200 calves gone too, so that's 400 head of cattle, yeah. We've got another load going on Sunday to the meatworks in Townsville, so anything we can get to go now will go just in case it doesn't rain. Earlier this year, we visited the couple when they were shooting cattle that could no longer survive. Since then, there's been little relief. And like graziers across the state, they're staring down the barrel of a hot, dry summer. If you don't feed them, you're going to lose a lot more stock. So, you, you, um, yeah, you just work out what, how, how far you can go with your feed. But it, it does come a point where the money runs out and you just can't feed any longer, yeah. We're completely out of, out of dry matter now. And, you know, for us to for us to uh, feed these um, cattle from here on in is just it's just going to be too expensive so on Saturday we um, we destock everything here you know we're going to put these on the stock route and walk them south. Well we usually carry two two and a half thousand head of cattle and we're down to around 500 at the moment and if we don't get a break this summer we'll have to get rid of them I'd imagine. The resulting emotional turmoil can have serious consequences. Oh, I think people really, some people are really struggling with it. I know last year I'd never had it before, but I crashed and burned big time with depression and ended up spending five weeks in hospital. Angus Emmett's property near Stonehenge had just two mills last weekend. And when you're going out and dealing with dead and dying stock and pulling stock out of bogs and shooting stock and doing all the sort of things you've got to do in a bad drought, it, yeah, it affects people. And sometimes people don't even realise how much they're affected until they actually fall off a cliff, which I did. I, th I think I'm going OK now, but it's a matter of concentrating on things you can change and not worrying about things you can't change. Big sappy calf, don't let him round! I think it is really important that people make the effort to yeah, to socialise and get out and, and mix with other people. But at least when you go home, you can think about other things, conversations that you had with other people, and it all it all helps in the end with, with your own coping mechanism. Where's the master blaster, the man that run at 98%? Ken Griffiths always said he... Last weekend, the Stonehenge community gathered for a very Australian event, Bronco Branding. He liked the Bulldogs, but the odds have slipped down a little bit. It was started in 1984 by the late Aaron Williams in Alice Springs. 
Occasions like this are often supported by governments because people need a break. But there's a growing feeling other assistance, including hundreds of millions of dollars in drought assistance loans, is being tied up in red tape. They're a bunch of bastards, lying bastards. They get on TV and they tell the population of Australia how much money that they're handing out and they're going to give all this money to the farmers and the farmers will be right, they'll be able to see this drought out and everything, but nothing ever shows up. When you actually start looking into it and the processes you've got to go through, and I think they make it so that, you know, it, it, you do, you just throw your hands up in the air. Even the Federal Industry Minister, Ian McFarlane, expressed concerns about the process on radio. I saw the country coming in, I've heard from the people, I've been, quite frankly, a bit shaken by. In Queensland, 250 farmers have applied for concession loans. Less than half have been approved. If you get onto these web pages and have a look, it, it just blows your mind, you know, you just... It, it sort of, unless you've got someone helping you to go through and read what you've got to do and then the paperwork you've got to fill out. We have three drought coordinators in Queensland, um, one in Mount Isa, one in Longreach, one in Charleville. We provide $1,500 to assist people to go to an accountant and get their drought applications um, for the loans uh, processed. I'm not for one moment saying that we, you know, it is perfect, we can do the job better and I have uh, put in clear requests for further streamlining of the process and I'll continue to do that. That's welcome news out west. It's certainly a big, big help with what they're throwing out there um, and they, are, they, are, they have got ears to hear us. I know people say, yeah, like the paperwork's hard, but when you look at what's out there, it's all publicised, there's that many people out there to help. If there's money being handed out, the government still has to substantiate it to the taxpayers and they're doing the right thing. And farmers admit no amount of money can substitute for rain. Even then, there'll be lean times for years to come. I would say not one of us fellas that are on the land that have had it pretty tough. We won't be back to the, what we were before it for at least 10 years. I mean, if we get early storms, this country will be Christmas time before it's even right to bring cattle back to, even if we did get early storms. But, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty doom and gloom out there. You sort of caught, you want to stay, but you want to actually have some sort of life but you don't have the money to have some have a life. 